What's up guys, my name is Grady Alec and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to share about how and why I became a software engineer or why I transitioned from electrical engineering to software engineering. So make sure you hit the like button and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Without further ado, let's get started. For those who don't know yet, I'm actually born and raised in Estonia. I came to the United States about eight years ago to get my bachelor's degree here. During my high school years, I was also able to learn about mechatronics and robotics. I, I really enjoyed that stuff and I think that was really fun. Although when I was looking for schools in the United States, it was, uh, it was really tough for me to find a school that would offer a program like a bachelor's in mechatronics or robotics just specifically for that. So I was really struggling to figure out what exactly I wanted to do and how I wanted to do that. I decided to go with electrical engineering because that seemed like the good path. I thought electrical engineering equals to like electronics and robotics and all that stuff. I didn't really know what to expect out of electrical engineering. And during my studies for, for electrical engineering, I only had few programming classes. So I had like two classes in Java, some classes in uh, microcontrollers where I did a little bit of uh, C programming, but that was, that was about it. So I really didn't have like a firm, solid background in software engineering. So on the other hand, majority of my classes were focused on like circuit design or ASIC design or power engineering or, or some classes were even for FPGA design. But that was, that was about it. So I really, during that time, I realized that, you know, electrical engineering was probably not the path that I should have taken. So I did learn a lot of good qualities, like reading schematics and doing all that stuff. I think that's really valuable experience, but I just, I just didn't get that excited about that stuff. During my first internship, I did some FPGA designs and some circuit designs. I did enjoy the FPGA programming uh, during that internship. And I think that was, that was a good experience for me. After my graduation, I moved to New York State and I kept working for the same company that I had my internship with for a little bit. And I did that remotely until I would find a position in here in New York State. After four or five months of searching, I finally found a position as a network engineer. It wasn't really what I wanted to do or what I would really think that I would want to do, but it was a, it was a job for me and uh, it was, uh, was going to be a new experience. So I, I had no idea what it was actually going to be doing. I know it was some work with uh, uh, WiMAX and 4G and LTE radios and programming those and and doing work like that and working some of the network systems related to that. But I didn't have an idea of what I would actually be doing or how my skills would actually be valuable to that position. After about one month working there, I came up with an idea to accelerate the programming process for the radio. I didn't really know how, to, how exactly to implement this, uh, but the idea was to use uh, uh, Python programming to develop a script or software to uh, automate that stuff. So I proposed that to my management. I, I obviously did some research beforehand on like how to do that or how, how to implement it. But uh, I, pro I proposed it to my management and my management was like pretty excited about it because it would have saved like about uh, 15, 20 minutes per programming for one radio. So it's a huge time saver. They gave me an opportunity to uh, actually ex execute that idea and like come up with a uh, solution. I, I just like did a bunch of research in Python. I watched a bunch of tutorials. I just did everything like on my own. I a bunch of Googling about Stack Overflow and like how to do things and so on. So I created the software that would automatically take these radios and just start programming them like one after another and it would do it really quick and it would just like save so much work hours. After I demoed it, the management was so stoked about it and they were like, wow, like this is amazing. Like obviously there were like a lot of bugs in it and a lot of things didn't work properly, but the general idea, what I was trying to do, I was able to show that and prove that. So they saw the value in that and they gave me an opportunity to keep improving on it. And I was really excited about it because I was learning a lot of new things. I was learning about software engineering, which I really like realized at that point, that's, that's what I want to do. I want to do 
a more software development, I think I, I learned the basics and from the basics, I was able to go forward and develop what I actually wanted to do, right? So really understanding the basics and, and getting a grasp of how things work and, and how to do them, that's the good starting point. But from there on, I, I had to really put in a lot of effort and thinking of how I can actually execute and make this thing happen. Eventually the upper management found out about this and they were really excited about this and they, they wanted me to demo it for them. So I flew into the headquarters, they, I showed it to them and they were like, wow, this is really cool. And a couple other people from other departments reached out to me and asked like if I could do something similar with uh, stuff that they're doing. So I met this CAD team and they were doing uh, these CAD designs for basically poles. The only thing that varies in those CAD designs is uh, just a bunch of fields that represent what the pole is, some unique identifications and so on. I thought to myself, okay, is there a way for me to write a Python code that would pull that information from the servers that the uh, CAD designers otherwise would like copy paste it all over anyways? Is there a way to take that information from there and just uh, automatically put it into the CAD, uh, CAD, CAD documents? And uh, I mean, obviously there was, there was a Python code to uh, essentially control uh, AutoCAD. So what I did was I used that Python library and I wrote a code to uh, use some APIs to get the information from the servers. I used some pandas data frames. I got the data and I automatically put it into uh, these specific uh, design documents or like these CAD documents. And like, all of that was done automatically for like hundreds of CAD designs. The program that I wrote ran through it like in, I don't know, like 20 minutes for like 100 designs. Whereas like if the, every CAD designer would have to do that manually, that would be like a 20 minute effort just to like copy paste those fields over one by one. So I, I created the software and I turned it into an application as well. In the end of it all, I did very little of network engineering and everything was Python development or software development. So I, I think it was such an amazing experience and uh, the fact that the leadership there recognized these things and they, they saw that potential in me and uh, gave me an opportunity to show that, you know, I, I can make these things happen. I think that was exceptionally awesome from them. I really enjoyed doing those Python applications and doing that software development. So I, I think that was a, just a blast for me. Unfortunately, I wanted to do something different. I, I wanted to do more, I wanted to learn more, and I, I wanted to dive into the software stuff more. I wanted to have a product behind me that I can be excited. I wanted to work with the latest technology. And I was underpaid at Tilson, so I thought to myself, I gotta make a career change. So I did try to make a career change. Tilson counter offered me and offered me a position as a data administration within their company. And that just didn't fly with me. That, that position, I think it was just too much of a IT position. After I learned about what a data administration would do, uh, it, just, it just wasn't exciting to me. Um, honestly, I, I believe there's like a bunch of people who would be very grateful for that opportunity. The pay was really good, but I just, I wasn't excited about the position. So I took another opportunity with Alstom Transportation as a software designer for their company. I really enjoyed the software engineering work that I did at Austin. Uh, it was more a embedded application type of work for uh, some of the railroads here, or not railroads, but uh, some of the trains here in the United States. Unfortunately, what I didn't really realize was that the industry is very outdated and uh, the technology that you work with is about 20, 30 years old which uh, I didn't like, but also when I was hired, I was promised uh, a lot of things that, that were not fulfilled. And uh, as soon as I got the position, things just like start turning around for worse for me. I'm not gonna go into the drama about all of that, but just to say that I really enjoyed the software engineering work that I did and things that I learned there. I learned a lot about documentation, uh, software development process, uh, all those things that I really didn't have any exposure to before uh, just because I was mainly self-taught at Tilson 
and all the things I learned there was just like learning stuff on my own. I didn't have like senior software engineers around me who would tell me like, hey, you gotta do it this way or this way or anything like that. So things I just learned were from YouTube videos and so on at that point. But with Alstom, I had senior engineers who taught me a lot of things I didn't know before. Although after nine months, I just, uh, I found a new position that I thought would be more suitable for me, which is a position that I currently hold, which is a embedded software engineering position with black box biometrics. I've been really excited about the product that I work with right now, which is a blast gauge used to measure uh, blast exposure in the US military or even uh, some law enforcement in the United States and around the world. So I'm, I'm really excited about that because I know it makes a change. And in overall, I think this position has given me a lot of learning opportunities. I've been able to work with Python, C, C++, C Sharp to do application and firmware development. In addition to that, I joined also online master's in computer science program at Georgia Tech just because I felt like I had the, I had the knowledge of how some of the hardware works in embedded software, but I feel like my background in software engineering hasn't had that solid foundation. So I really wanna develop the solid foundation in uh, computer science so that I can learn more about programming. I can learn more about so the data science aspect and some algorithms and AI and machine learning. I think those are all valuable things because down the road I can see how uh, the products that we are currently developing and working on, how they will be using algorithms for machine learning or artificial intelligence. I think that's, uh, that's where the future is. Trust me, I'm, I'm not an expert being a software engineer or anything like that. You, you just heard like, I just came from this rough path of learning a bunch of things by myself and figuring things out. And I think that's really what engineering is about. Engineering isn't about like how well you can uh, follow tutorials online or anything like that. It's about how well you can solve the problems. If you have an issue, do you have the knowledge and resources to make it happen? And how do you solve it? How do you design it? And I, I think that's purely what engineering is. Whether it's software engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering, and the list goes on and on, right? So if you want to go into software engineering, you gotta push yourself, you gotta make it happen. There's, uh, there's some boot camps out there. You can transition into uh, software engineering uh, by doing a computer science degree. There's software engineering degree. You could do electrical engineering degree and then transition if you don't want to do that, like, and that's, that's fine. So I think that op there's a lot of opportunities. You can definitely do a self-taught course program and you can probably do it for free if you have the motivation to do it yourself without a curriculum on YouTube. I'm, I'm not even kidding. You can learn anything on YouTube and probably the stuff that you would pay at a bootcamp. Guess how much it costs on YouTube? It's free. You can have all this stuff for free on YouTube. I, I don't think you should be paying for anything like that if you have the motivation to do it yourself. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly, truly appreciate it. Make sure you hit that like button, consider subscribing, and keep up the good work, and I'll see you next time.